there's literally no direction for you to look into that doesn't include some way of spending your money. Do you also remember when like, you know, you were a kid and Roblox shops just felt so much more grand, so much more important. Like, you know, your friend would be like, yo bro, I just, I just spent, you know, I got like this like $10 gift card and I just bought this like cool new item in like, I don't know, whatever games were popular back in the day, right? And you're like, whoa, really? Like it was such an exciting feeling. And now shops are just, you buy something and then you get the cash and then you run through the cash and then you have to buy the cash again. Shops nowadays just feel a lot more cheap. And while you could explain it with nostalgia, because, you know, definitely some shops back then also were, you know, cash grabs and just, you know, very cheap and everything. But I've gone back to play, you know, some older games that I used to play before. And I also played modern games. And, you know, knowing what I know about Roblox, game development and making money, it's not nostalgia. It's 100% the fact that people have now recognized that Roblox games can be monetized and they're just pushing the hell out of it. So let me actually show you this in action, okay? I'm going to make two shop GUIs, okay? And while I, while I talk, while I explain all of this, right, I just want you to ask yourself, right, like imagine like, you know, you're younger, you're a kid, or not even a kid, maybe just like a couple of years back, like you played Roblox, right? Shops did feel a lot more rewarding, right? I don't know, I just, I, like, I know I already talked about this, but like before it's like you, you do a purchase and it's like, whoa, and now it's like you do a purchase and it's like, okay, like maybe you buy premium in some game. Like I, I bought premium in Arsenal like a month ago and it's like, okay, I get the cool little, like, you know, colored name, but besides that, it's like, what else? You know, what you have to understand is that both the cheap and the important shops were both began in the same way. Both creators sat down and had the exact same frame, the exact same, you know, tools and customizations that they could use. And yet one turned out to be very cheap and the other important. Why is that? The most important factor is that both games are just made with a different purpose. Because for example, let's take the cheap game, right? What might its purpose be, right? Well, to make money, obviously. And it's like, there's nothing inherently wrong with that, right? Like obviously, you know, you make a Roblox game, you put an effort into it, and you want to actually, you know, make some money from it. I see no issue with that. But then the thing is, if the purpose of your game is to make money, well then wouldn't you just prioritize the shop or, you know, like similar, just, you know, microtransactional elements a lot more than the actual gameplay? Like this isn't to say that your entire game is just the shop, although I mean, to be fair, some games have felt like that. But it's just saying that like the gameplay and the potential that the game could have brought in is just ruined by the fact that, you know, the developers are prioritizing a shop a lot more than the actual gameplay. But then if you look at a more important shop, a shop that actually takes itself more seriously, which is another point I'll actually cover, well then their main purpose with the game is just to make a good game. This isn't to say that they can't monetize the game, right? This isn't to say that like, oh yeah, they put in all of this effort and then, you know, they, we just expect to get it for free because I 100% support, you know, a game developer making a good game and then actually like getting money out of the game. That's 100%. I think, I think if you make a game and you don't monetize it, I think you're stupid. But again, the difference here is that one of these things is actually deserved, right? If you take the important game, you know, where they put in, you know, a lot of effort, I'm assuming they put in a lot of effort, right? Like, sure, some games, you know, they look nice, but maybe they actually didn't, like, have that much thought in put into them, I understand. But let's take a game like Doors, for example. Do you think Doors was made with monetization in mind? I'm not saying that Doors, you know, never planned to monetize. Of course they did. Of course they planned to monetize. But it's like, Doors launched, uh, what shop did it launch with again? It was just like a basic... Uh, like you could buy doorknobs, right? And it's like, what do doorknobs even do? And the weirdest part about all of this, and I assume you noticed this yourself, is that the games who prioritize gameplay over shops, they just have a better shop over, like, have you ever noticed this, right? Like, it's like the, the games where like, you know, it seems like making money is their top priority. They don't even put any effort into making the shop look good. Like legit, do you know what they have, right? So here we have, you know, obviously like in, in just five minutes, right? But let's say if I, if both developers had only five minutes to design their shops, then the important game developer would design it like this and actually make it look nice and clickable. You know what the cheap one would do? Um, ah, uh, that button, ah, uh, button, where's the button? Here, okay, and then duplicate the button, and then here, and then, okay, 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 and then this button is infinite cash. Yay, guys, and then we can, you know, scale the text. And then we can make this bigger so that people actually see this. You can clearly see the difference, right? This one is a lot more elegant. There's a lot more smoothness, a lot more personality in this one. Obviously, it's a five minute shop, right? So obviously it doesn't look the greatest, but it's like I said, this is the ratio of effort. If both of these game developers were given an hour to make the shop, well, then the bad game developer might make their shop look like this. Fair enough. But then the good game developer would literally make something so amazing, bro. Like, honestly, I feel like the door shop is a great example of this. They made it look very nice. The second difference is that one game just takes itself a lot more seriously than the other. Because let's say you maybe spent like five years, which okay, might be a little too long. Most games are done in like one year or two years, right? But let's say you spent five years 
working on a game and it's truly like a passion of yours, right? Would you allow it to have a shop that looks like this? And because you take your game seriously, it means that you take the actual experience of the game seriously. I've legit, bro, I've seen games do this. You know what they do? The important shop, right? They might think like, okay, well, we don't want to open up the shop when the player joins the game, right? When the player joins the game, we want them to actually, you know, look around first, you know, like see what's up, actually get into the gameplay. And then the shop will be like a button that they could click whenever they want to, right? Fair enough. You know what some of these stupid games do, bro? Like, like I said, I'm all for monetization, right? I, I actually really like to see when games just like cash out as much as they can. I have to scam. But as a player, it's so annoying when you join a game, like legit, I've joined games before. And the first thing that pops up is like sale or like, you know, like new shop or something like bro, seriously. I play your game and the first thing I met with is just to spend my real money on a thousand cash. What does 1000 cash mean in this game? Some games have a gameplay that is built around the shop. So I know that right now, what it seems like I'm doing is I'm basically saying, oh yeah, the higher the quality of a game, the better of a shop that they have. And that's somewhat true, but also not really. Because the purpose of this video is to basically explain why a lot of shops feel more cash grabby, right? And the thing is, they do, right? Most shops nowadays are a lot more cash grabby than they were before, okay? If we take a popular game like, I don't know, Pet Simulator, for example, obviously they're not gonna have a shop that looks like this, right? Obviously, they're going to maximize their shop to make it a lot more, you know, enticing to purchase from it. But then you know what these people do? They use a system called the Apple Ladder System. And so let me show you what I mean, right? So I just opened Apple, right? Mother's Day, perfect gift for mom. Sure, I'm, I'm looking for a gift for my mom. And let's say I want to buy her, let's say iPhone 13, okay? So I want to buy the iPhone 13, you know, and then, you know, there's iPhone 15, iPhone 14. And so, you know, you're sitting here, you're comparing like, okay, displays, aluminum glass, okay, dynamic island, interesting. So, you know, you're looking at all of these things what do I get in an iPhone 13 Pro? And then you look and you're like, wow, okay, ProMotion technology, stainless steel, okay, the chips are, you know, 5 core instead of 4 core, which you don't even know what that means, but it sounds cool, right? You get a 3x zoom instead of just one. And then, you know, you look at more and more and you're like, damn, okay, this one actually is a lot better, right? And then you're sitting here comparing prices and you're saying, okay, you know what, maybe let's buy the iPhone 13 Pro. I mean, it doesn't cost all that much, you know, more, and it has a lot more of these cool features. And then you notice, oh, you know what? The iPhone 13 Pro costs basically exactly the same as the iPhone 14, which actually has more features, right, uh, for the most part. And then now you're looking at the iPhone 14, and now you're looking, okay, what does the iPhone 14 Pro have? And you're like, damn, so much of these features, dynamic island, right? That's so interesting. And then you notice that the iPhone 14 Pro, right, it basically costs the same as the newest iPhone 15. So now you're looking at the iPhone 15 and you're saying, okay, well, it has more features, but it, it doesn't have the promotion technology. Oh, but you know what has the promotion technology? The iPhone 15 Pro, okay? It has every single technology. And while I'm at it, might as well buy the Pro Max, which is the most expensive iPhone right now. Do you see what just happened? Do you see how we just went from an iPhone 13 to an iPhone 15 Pro Max seemingly all by ourselves. That's what the Apple ladder system is, right? Basically, it just gives you slightly better and better options that seem like they cost, you know, just a little bit more and you're willing to spend a little bit more money for these options, right? And then you just keep going up and up and up and up until you reach literally their final and most expensive phone. And so a lot of modern popular Roblox games do a very similar thing where they begin with fun gameplay and then as you continue progressing, they just make the game play as stale as possible until you actually purchase something. And I can actually give you an example of me doing this with my own channel. So I sell one product being my course, right? Because, you know, I teach Roblox Studio, you know, and then if you want to, you know, learn more about Roblox Studio, you can give me like 30, 40 bucks and then you get like six hours of exclusive content. And so what these games do, right? Imagine if this is what I started doing. Imagine if I make one video and it captivates you, okay? And you're like, damn, okay, this guy's pretty cool. And you really like the video, okay? And so, you know, you you kind of hear me mention the course in the, in the description or whatever. Whatever, but you're like, okay, whatever, I'm here for the video. And then imagine if as you're watching the videos, you just begin to notice that one by one, each video becomes more of an ad. Like legit, imagine this. Imagine if you're just watching a basic video, right? And then it's like, oh, it's very cool. Oh, why I hate Roblox abilities. Haha, ha, that's so funny. And then it's like 20 videos in and I'm legit just posting ads for my course. Like, like it's, it's like disguised as a video, but it's like almost the entire video is like every 10 seconds I go like, hey guys, by the way, uh, I have a course in the description, guys. Huh? And look, I'm not saying to not monitor your product okay look i make the i made the course i'm really proud of it so obviously i'll plug it every every once in a while but i do it every once in a while because that's actually the most efficient way for me to sell if i just genuinely say hey i have a course and i like the course and you can go buy it right then the person who would actually be willing
willing to buy my course is now a lot more willing to check it out than if I literally push it on them. Please, guys, please, I have a product. And that's what these games are doing, right? Obviously, not all of them. Again, disclaimer, but you're smart enough to understand what I'm talking about, right? And so just quickly now, you might be wondering, okay, but how would I make my shop more appealing than the other? And honestly, this will be a quick section because like, I'm not about to just make you a whole scripted shop, which I have in my course, guys. Haha. -ha. See, that's a good plug right there. But from what I noticed, the shop has to be visually appealing, okay? Nothing like this. Unless, again, like I said, maybe this is like the style of your game. But it's just when your shop feels repetitive, uncreative, and just lazy, just quickly made. That's just not good. And the second main thing, which, you know, we kind of covered already, is that your game just needs to have fun gameplay right off the bat. Because the shop should honestly be more of an afterthought. Like, you make the game, you make it as good as you can, and then you begin to wonder, okay, if I make a shop right now, what could I actually offer to people to make this more of like an enjoyable experience, right, for their money? There's a game called Deep Space. Face Tycoon, which does this insanely well. And it's funny because their shop, I believe, actually does sell infinite cash. But the difference is that they literally say on their shop, like, we only offer this as an option if you want to actually finish the tycoon, because I'm pretty sure it, it, it's the biggest tycoon out there right now. It has like several thousands of buttons, like, it's, it's a really good game. And so that's why they get a pass because of this, right? Because that's an exception. So they're allowed to sell, you know, like, infinite cash or whatever. But then they have another shop section where, like, you legit can buy new content, right? Like, they have, like, these islands, right? And you can buy a new island to complete. And it's, like, legitimately for, like, 200 Robux, you unlock this new piece of content which is fun, which is literally big enough to be considered its own game. That's a good shop, right? It's like they made the full game. I mean, the game isn't finished. You know, the, the creator of the game is subscribed to me. So if anyone has like connections to him and could reach out, that, that would be great. But you can see how a game like that would have a much more enjoyable shop than a game who starts off with the shop in mind. But I am interested if this is something that you've experienced as well. Because bro, like four years ago, I was like 13 playing a bunch of like Apocalypse Rising. That was a goaded game. And it's like none of them really pushed shops at all. Like if thing is it had a shop but i legit i legit never even knew it had a shop like literally only recently i played the game again and i just saw like okay yeah they have a shop right and like i remembered the button being there so it wasn't like a new feature that they added but it's like while i was playing that wasn't a gameplay element like i remember you could like buy keys and open like crates laying around the map but even though that's a very good integration of shops and gameplay right it wasn't like a thing where like okay yeah if you if you pay us right now then you can uh, get this OP weapon that like kills everyone. And the most important thing, which like I said, I cannot stress enough, is the fact that it didn't interrupt my gameplay. But a lot of modern games are beginning to do that now, and I think that's just because like a lot of the kids who are playing, they don't care, right? They just play, oh, oh yay, Blade Ball, and it's like I, tr I, I opened up Blade Ball, and there's like so much user interface of like, oh, buy this, buy that, like you're in the lobby, you look around, there's literally no direction for you to look into that doesn't include some way of spending your money. And also YouTube is unsubscribing people. So make sure you're subscribed. And you know, the funny thing is YouTube isn't even unsubscribing anyone. That's just, you know, how like some like stupid YouTubers are saying that like, oh, actually guys, uh, there's a bug going on. And there's no bug going on, bro. They're lying to you and they hate you, which is exactly what these people are doing with shops. So like I said, I'm not going to lie to you, right? But like, I would really like the silver play button. So if you could subscribe, that would be great. And yeah, so, you know, go check out my course in the description. And we are back to basics. Thank you for watching.